I got a bunch of requests to watch and review The Kashmir Files, a film about the exodus, or depending on your view, the genocide of Kashmiri Hindus. The movie wasn't playing at any theaters close to me, but I eventually found a theater about 40 minutes away that had it, so my wife and I went to see it. The theater was full of Indians and then us right in the middle. The main point that the film is trying to get across is that what has been thought of for about 30 years as an exodus of Hindus from the Kashmir Valley was actually a genocide that has been largely covered up by journalists and educators and politicians, and that now a younger generation of Hindus, even the children of the people who fled for their lives, don't know what happened. So the film claims to present what really happened. Now, since most of you have no clue what's been going on in Kashmir, Here's a quick history lesson for some background so you can understand the plot of the film. The British arrived in India in the 1600s and eventually controlled what are now India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. But much like the American colonies that ultimately became the United States, the people of India did not like being controlled by the British. So there were various resistance movements and rebellions, but the British for a very long time were just too powerful to drive out. After World War II, however, the British just didn't want to be fighting on the other side of the world. They were too worn out and too broke, so they decided to leave. And their withdrawal from India was about as well planned as the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. The British decided that they were going to make two countries, India and Pakistan. All of the territories and what were called princely kingdoms that the British controlled would have to make a choice. Become part of India, become part of Pakistan, or be your own thing. Most territories joined either India or Pakistan based on the number of Hindus or Muslims in the population. But one of the territories that didn't join either India or Pakistan was the princely kingdom of Jammu and Kashmir. So when the British left in 1947, the princely kingdom of Jammu and Kashmir was its own thing. But not choosing a side didn't last long because Pakistan started attacking and the leader of Jammu and Kashmir asked India for protection against Pakistan. India came to the rescue, that led to a war and more wars, and the conflict has continued until today. Now, in 1989 and 1990, there was an armed insurgency against the Indian government's presence in Kashmir. Multiple Islamic terrorist groups began targeting not only the Indian military, but also Hindus in general. And that's where the film, The Kashmir Files, begins. I'm sure I'll be guilty of some minor spoilers in what I'm about to say, but nothing that's going to ruin the film for you if you haven't seen it yet. So, the film begins with Muslims attacking Hindus. Muslims are shouting, convert, leave, or die, and telling Hindu men to leave the Kashmir Valley, but to leave their wives behind. There's a Hindu teacher who's worried about the safety of his son's family because his son has been accused of being a spy for India. His son hides in a barrel of rice when the jihadis show up to his house, but his Muslim neighbor snitches on him and tells the jihadis where he's hiding. They shoot the barrel and out comes rice mixed with blood. The leader of the jihadis then makes the wife eat some rice soaked with her husband's blood in exchange for letting her family live. So she and her father-in-law and her two sons, one of whom is a baby named Krishna, have to get out of there because the Kashmir Valley is no longer safe for Hindus. Fast forward to 2020, Krishna is all grown up. He's a college student. Apart from his grandfather, the man who had been a teacher, his family is dead. He's been told that they died in an accident. Because of what he's been taught in college, Krishna blames the Indian government for what happened in Kashmir. After his grandfather dies, some of his grandfather's friends, who saw firsthand what happened in Kashmir, decide to tell him what really happened. So they're telling him it was a genocide. Other people are telling him that it was the Indian government cracking down on freedom fighters, and he has to investigate to see what really happened. The film builds up to a speech Krishna gives in college where he explains everything he's learned about the history of Kashmir. I could go into a lot more detail, but then I'd be giving too much away if you're planning to see it. So, my thoughts on the film. The Kashmir Files is a good movie. Definitely worth watching. The acting is great. It's well written. It's well directed. Great dialogue. There are all kinds of memorable lines. One of the Hindus says something like, Kashmir was paradise on earth, but the terrorists turned it into hell on earth to guarantee their place in paradise. Lots of good quotes like that. If you're wondering whether you should take your kids, there is a lot of graphic violence. There are people getting shot in the head, execution style. The worst scene is a woman getting 
sawn in half. So if you don't want to see things like that and you go anyway, be sure to cover your eyes when you see a gun pointed at someone's head or when you see people turn on a mechanical saw. The film is in Hindi here in the U.S. It's got English subtitles. Some people don't like reading subtitles, but Hindi speakers use lots of English words and phrases, so you can understand a lot of what's going on even without reading the subtitles. I usually don't like reading subtitles when I'm watching movies, but I didn't have a problem with it here. So, no reason not to see the film unless you really don't want to see graphic violence. Now, I have seen several criticisms of the film. Let me address the most common criticisms that are circulating. First, several critics have complained that some of the numbers have been inflated. For instance, I think the film says that 4,000 Kashmiri Hindus were killed in the conflict. I've seen numbers that are very different in different places. I've seen articles claiming that 200 were killed, or that 400 were killed, or that 600 were killed, or that 1,300 were killed. One of the claims of the Kashmir Files is that many of the deaths weren't reported or were covered up. But if you're claiming that a certain number of deaths is historically accurate, then the number would need to be based on something. I don't know enough about this to make a judgment, but if you have any evidence for specific numbers of deaths, feel free to share that in the comments section. Second, several critics have pointed out that the events in the film have been modified and mashed together from totally different historical events. So, we have Hindus fleeing Kashmir in 1990, that happened. Then, a little later, there's an attack on a village where jihadis dressed up as Indian soldiers and executed a bunch of Hindus. That attack happened, but it was much later, in 2003, and many of the details were changed. In the film, the woman I mentioned earlier, who was sawn in half, was sawn in half during this attack on the village. In reality, the woman was killed during the violence in 1990. And here, the real story was even worse. A Hindu woman named Girija Tiku was a librarian and a lab assistant. She fled the Kashmir Valley with the other Hindus, but she eventually got a call from a Muslim she had worked with who said that she was safe to return and collect her paycheck. But it was a setup. When she went back, she was brutally gang raped and tortured, and then she was cut in half while she was still alive. So, the film changes a lot of details and compresses a lot of stories into one. I don't have a problem with that. If you're trying to condense 30 years of history into a three-hour film, you're going to have to modify and compress some things. Third, critics have pointed out that the film ignores Hindu violence against others. There has been a lot of violence in that area over the decades, so why doesn't the film include, let's say, violence against Muslims? That's the criticism. My view here is that the film is about the attacks on Kashmiri Hindus, so complaining that the film doesn't include a bunch of other stuff would be like complaining about a Holocaust film and saying, well, why doesn't the film talk about stuff that happened to the Germans? Movies have a point. Other points have to be made in other movies. So, if you think there's another point that needs to be made about other things that happened, write a screenplay. Fourth, the main criticism against the Kashmir Files is that it makes all Muslims look like bad guys. The film makes it seem like all Muslims are in on this plot to destroy Hindus. And this is, I think, a fair point to be raised. I can only recall one time where the film acknowledges that not all Muslims are bad. During Krishna's speech at the end, he mentions moderate Muslims. And he says that jihadis kill moderate Muslims as well. But for the most part, the film does give off a Muslims bad, don't ever trust Muslims vibe. And it's just a fact that not all Muslims, not even all Muslims in Kashmir, supported what happened to the Hindus there. I understand that the film is about what happened to the Hindus and that the attacks were perpetrated by Muslims, but I think there should have been some acknowledgement that not all Muslims wanted the violence. Because not all Muslims wanted the violence. And it's generally a good idea not to put everyone from a group into the same category. We don't want to lump everyone together and say, they're all evil and they all want to kill us. Because as soon as you spread the idea that one group is pure evil and wants to kill everyone else, people get the idea that it's okay to slaughter anyone in that evil group. And if we learned anything from the Kashmir Files, it's that we shouldn't target entire groups of people because they're different from us. Those are my thoughts on the film. If it's playing in a theater near you, be sure to check it out.